Uh, if you could sign your seat and draw your attention up here, we'll begin uh, the panel momentarily. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, our panel discussion this afternoon. Uh, themed around the question, is there a role for faith in the university? Uh, so the nature of our conversation, we're, we're delighted uh, to have Professor Randall Balmer, who many of you know, uh, probably a number of you are his students uh, here at Dartmouth, who's the chair of the religion department, also practicing Episcopal priest, and so looking for his uh, reflections at that intersection. Um, and then also, uh, just really delighted to, to be joined by uh, Miroslav Vol, who I have the privilege of studying with uh, at Yale Divinity School right now, uh, and he is a uh, um, professor of systematic theology there, as well as the founding director of the Yale Center for Faith and Culture, uh, which also deals with, with themes right uh, at the intersection of our conversation this afternoon. Uh, so we're just delighted to have them. Um, so without any further ado, I just want to sort of jump right into the core uh, discussion. Uh, I think if you were to sort of take the pulse on uh, sort of the intellectual commentary going, up, going about uh, the theme of the mission of the university today, you, you've noticed, uh, at least in the last 10 or so years, there have been a number of books published that have, uh, perhaps some of them more alarmist than others, uh, talk about a crisis in the American university. Um, Harry Lewis, on the name of that first book, Excellence Without a Soul, talks about uh, the, the struggle that universities are facing, helping 18-year-olds become 22-year-olds. That's how he frames it. Uh, Anthony Crowman at Yale also published a book called Education's End, why, you, why universities have given up on the meaning of life, something like that. Yeah. Or he, he raises similar concerns about sort of the, the level of normative reflection going on uh, in our college communities. Um, Andrew Del Banco at Columbia, just one other example, gives uh, sort of a critique of you know, the more vocational orientation of our colleges and saying we've lost some of the inquiry that is traditionally defined over the law's education. Uh, there's a number of, of critiques and concerns. I, you know, my first uh, question for our uh, panelists here is just what, what um, do you, when you look at the university today, what, what do you see as being some of the challenges uh, that you're most concerned about? Um, how do they feature in your experience? You know what? Before the Yale. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's a, that's a very very big question, and I think we can just take I can take a, a, just a little slice of my own uh, reflections and concerns about uh, universities. But I, I think if I were to try to of sum it up is I would say that I have a fear that universities are increasingly, I would put it, evolving into kind of research institutes, uh, institutes combined with uh, kind of technological professional kind of schools all interested one on the one hand about explaining reality as research institutes how the universe as a whole and different pieces bits and pieces of it function and on the other hand figuring out how to get deploy appropriate means to achieve uh, certain desirable ends. Um, and kind of dominated primarily also not by the instrumental rationality. And what's left out of um, critical investigation is the question of purposes uh, and the meaning of human existence. Uh, I think the question of who we are, what the purpose of our existence is, and what the shape of a good life is, belongs to the very heart of critical exploration as it has emerged, at least in the Western tradition, both uh, in, from the, in, the, in the, the ancient Greece as well as in uh, uh, the Christian tradition uh, or the Christian contribution to university formation. And that seems to be to be dropping off from the university uh, concern. I think that's a big a big deal. 
we become then um, experts in uh, means, but amateurs in ends, in goals. Um, and if you think then, how are ends, human ends, are then set, if you think of it then as then being somehow set by some kind of combination of following um, not carefully reflected desires that we had combined with uh, assessments of appropriate means of satisfying them, something like consumer reports. <laughs> um, that, that kind of guides the decision making about the, uh, about the ends without deeper reflection on this. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a deeply problematic uh, stance to be in. Uh, I'm aware that that's not all that you, the, the, my description here, the contrast between the two is, is kind of, you have to squint, look from afar, squint, and kind of uh, um, um, push out of the picture the fine texture of uh, various things that happen at the university. But that's what I see is trajectory in which universities are increasingly going, this country, elsewhere in the world. Uh, and I think for me that's a deep sense of concern. I, in a different way, uh, in my own way, share the concern of Anthony Cronman in his book, Education's End, which Andrew has already mentioned. That's roughly where he is headed also in that book. From very different uh, perspective, he's a very good, uh, good friend. He tends to be more atheist agnostic, an atheist agnostic spectrum of things. I end up being more on the peace uh, spectrum of things in terms of how we think the things ought to be improved, we differ, uh, partly but the diagnosis of the, of the problem is, I think, uh, similar. All right, thank you. I, uh, I didn't realize there were degrees of education. Interesting idea. Um, I guess I'd like to separate the, the question a little bit and, and talk about humanities in the university or college in the setting, and also the role of religion. Uh, is there a crisis in the university in terms of humanities? And there is, uh, and it's been widely accounted upon. Uh, two different uh, studies recently have, have tried to probe that, one at Harvard and one by the American Academy or something like that, uh, that has really tried to look into that and say, it, they're talking about many of the same things, the whole the, the careerism that, that tends to engulf uh, students. I think particularly in times of economic crisis, obviously, you're, you're concerned, your parents are concerned, about what your major will be and what courses you take in terms of how that might prepare you for a, uh, a good job after, after, after college. Uh, but I think the humanities are in trouble and certainly we see it in the numbers and, and there's a, actually a conference here, or a summit they're calling it here at Dartmouth on November, I'm sorry, May 9 and 10, I believe, is that right, Roberta? I think it's May 9 and 10, Friday and Saturday. And, just put a plug in for that because I think it's it's, uh, it's going to be a good discussion. So yes, I think the humanities are in trouble as opposed to the sciences and more professional sorts of tracks for for students. Uh, the role of religion in that in that calculus, I think, is is probably a bit more complicated than, than we think. And as a historian, I tend to take a historical view. Here we have uh, Dartmouth College founded by they use a wheel lock as Moore's Charity School down in Lebanon, Connecticut, moving up here to New Hampshire to become Dartmouth College. Uh, this is an institution that was founded, like Yale was, and Harvard, and uh, many other places, as an explicitly Christian institution. Well, that didn't work out all that well. It will go along with a uh, long scope of history uh, in terms of maintaining that sort of uh, particular mooring. Uh, and I have to say that. In my old age, <laughs> and I'm older than everybody else in this man. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, nobody believes you, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> institution exists primarily to perpetuate itself. <laughs> and it's not a very good 
is uh, not a very good, as I say, vessel for, for piety or even for the propagation of faith or religion. I've also come to believe, again in my old age, that religion always functions best at the margins. And once you begin to lust after whatever it might be, political power or institutional authority, you lose your prophetic voice. So when I hear people like George Marsden, who's a friend of George's, and I've known George for decades, and I consider him a friend, I just don't buy his argument that colleges and universities should be places for effectively the engendering of piety. I don't think it works. I think piety and religion and faith best operates at the margins, not as a central part. Well, maybe it's different at Yale, but I suspect. But it's different at Yale. But it's different at Yale. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree, actually, uh, with this. Um, but I, I would differentiate between engagement in the great conversation uh, around issues of the purposes of life, of moral formation,